In this video, we're going to carry on with the laser theme with the um, Monport 40 watt laser that I received to try out. Um, I'm going to do some free care stuff here, creating a box, finger joint box, using one of the workbenches in FreeCAD. So the workbench I already have installed is called Laser Cut Interlocking. If you don't have it and you want it, you go into the add-on manager and you're looking for a workbench. So you need to change this to workbenches. And if you just type in here LC, you'll see it's called LC Interlocking. That stands for Laser Cut Interlocking. So once you have that, you can start a new file and I'm going to start a new part and then in the laser cut interlocking workbench I'm going to go to this first icon now let me explain this icon over here I'm actually going to move this icon that icon is my easy alias icon so it's nothing to do with the laser cut interlocking so you don't need to worry about that one these are the laser cut interlocking icons. We're only going to use a couple of them today, but we're going to create a box. So to create a box, there's one conveniently called box. If we hit that, it immediately modeled a box. I want my box to be 50 by 50, so I'm going to just change that dimension to 50. And then I'll just say preview, and you'll see the box is now 50 by 50. And that's all I need for my box. I'm going to leave everything else default and I'm just going to say OK. So now I have a box. What I need to do is to figure out where the tabs are all going to go. If you look at the way the box is constructed, we have two sides, this side and this side that are on the outside edges and two sides on the inside. So this side and this side. So we want the tabs to be coming through here. Obviously, they can't come off this face because they wouldn't, they wouldn't meet the box. So. Let's have a quick look. So the ones we don't need are face panel and I think it's behind panel. So those are the two we're not gonna be using to create our tabs initially. So what we need to do is we need to um, create tabs and to do that, we're gonna take pieces into our box. Now I'm gonna make a box with an open lid. So I'm gonna go to the top panel. I'm just gonna hit space bar and turn that off. So this is the box I'm going to make with an open lid. So it's an open top box. So then I'm going to select all of these, everything except that top panel, and I'm going to hit this one. It's called slots. I'm going to hit that and say add parts. Now my parts are in this slots dialog box. So now I want to identify what part is this one and what part is this one. So let's do that. So we know the face and behind, so that must be the left panel and the right panel. So I'm gonna to go to select the face panel, turn that off. Select the behind panel, turn that off. Select the bottom panel and turn that off. So again, it's just, you highlight it, space bar, turns it off. So now I know I want these faces and I'm gonna take this face, I'm going to hold down control, I'm going to hit that face, turn it this way, and I'm going to use control again, select those two faces, then I'm going to roll it around there, and select control again, and take those two faces. So, so basically I have three faces, this face, this face, this face, on each of those. Now I'm going to say add faces. Now what it does is it adds face 314 and face 314 in the right panel. So now we have all the faces that we need to add our tabs to. Then what we're going to do is we go with face 4, which is this bottom face, and I'm going to make that three tabs. Then face 4 on the other one and make that three tabs. Then on face one, I'm gonna make that two tabs. And on face three, I'm gonna make that one tab and just leave that as one tab. So one tab, face one, 
two tabs. So I've got two at this end, one at that end, three on the bottom. So that's those bits done. So I'm going to turn those off for now. And I'm going to bring on the face panel and the behind panel. Now these ones will need to link into the bottom. So I'm just going to use this face and control on that face. I'm going to say add faces. And just for make it clear, I'm going to clear, I'll just shrink down the, the left panel and right panel lists. And I'll open up these two lists. So we've got face four here. And I'm just going to say two on that one and two on that one. And that's all my, all my tabs. I'll have two tabs on there, two tabs on there, and all the rest as we did before. So what we can do is we can preview that. And when we preview it, we can see all the tabs. And I'm not sure I'm liking having those two tabs there. So I might change that. So let's just have a quick look. I've got two and three. So that leaves us a reasonable size of this piece. And then maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it where I've got three tabs and make those tabs a little bit smaller. And I think I'm going to make both of these parts, I think I'm going to make one tab. So let's have a look at that. So my face panel, my behind panel. Let me just, I'm going to go into my model now. So what it does, it creates a whole nother file with these tabbed parts on it. So I can go in there and I can select it and see what tabs I have. And I can see that one, the right panel has two tabs and the left panel has two tabs. And I don't think I like those two tabs. So I'm gonna change those to one tab. So let's go do that. We'll go back in here, right panel, and we'll go to the correct face. Yeah, so we're going to change that to one. So it's face one on the right panel and face one on the left panel. I'm just going to make those two. We'll hit preview again. We'll go back and we'll take a look now. That looks much better. I haven't got too many in there. And when I look at this cut out here, this piece here is big enough. But where I've got three um, tabs, I think I'm going to make those tabs smaller. So let's go back here. And those tabs are on. My right and left faces. So I'm going to make those. Instead of being 10, I'm going to make them. Six. And I'm going to preview that. And then we'll take a look. There, now that looks, that looks better to me. I'm happy with that. So now I've got a box I'm happy with. And it has the tabs in it that I want. And then what I'm going to do. And at this point, I could save this if I want to but I'm not going to because I don't really need it. Um, I could also save this one, but I'm not really going to because I don't really need it. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take our piece and we're going to use this export. And this export is a little bit of a misnomer. What it does, it gets it ready for export, if you like. So I'm going to highlight all my pieces that I want to export. So that's my whole model going to hit this export and what it does it creates a whole nother part or a whole nother file that has those in it uh, one thing that I do almost every time I've done this if you go to tasks you got to say okay to this and get out of that screen before you can create the export okay so they're still highlighted I hit the export and there's the export and if I turn that slightly you'll see the bit we really care about is those projections on the back. That's what we're going to use for laser cutting. And 
I'm not altogether sure how it decides where to lay them out. I don't know if that's very uh, effective space-wise. It doesn't look bad. I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to highlight all of those. Make sure I've got them all highlighted. And then I'm going to say File, Export. And we want to export it not as an STL, but we want to export it as a flattened SVG. It's a flattened SVG. That takes out the layers. There are no layers in it. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to put it in this laser test, and I'm going to call it Fifty millimeter open box two because I already did one as a test, and then I'm going to save that. Now I have a file that has what I need for light burn, so that I can set up the laser cut. So let's get into light burn, and this is light burn. I haven't modified it or customized it very much at all. I'm going to File, Import, and I'm going to look for that 50 millimeter open box too, and just import it. And now I can see where it's going to sit in terms of my um, cutting area. So my cutting area, my, my origin is here, it's 300 wide, and it's 200 deep. So I can take this whole thing, and I can move it over closer to the origin. And if I wanted to, I could ungroup this and move that one up there. But I think that's quite, that's, that's fairly good. I'm, I'm okay with that. So now what we need to do is to tell it how to cut it. So I downloaded this library from the Monport 40 Watt website. It has a library of materials. And one of them is cardboard. And if you go in there, it says three millimeter cardboard. And to, to cut it, and it says watch for fire. Then I can click that and say assign. And what it'll do is it'll take that as being my settings. But I'm going to actually change those settings. I think I'm going to go in here using these as a baseline. I'm going to make this 1,000. And I'm going to make this 30%. And I think that will do a good cut. we will say OK. And it's on the output. So we're good there. Now, there's plenty of other things you can do in Lightburn because I know my origin is here and I know where that maps to actually inside the laser. Um, I can draw the outline of the piece of card that I'm going to cut it on and then that would tell me where it would sit inside that card. But it really doesn't matter for this one as long as I've got enough card for it to, to sit on. Um, I, I think what I have here will be plenty good enough. So we will take it to, to uh, the laser and we'll actually cut the little box out of cardboard and then we'll put it together and you'll be able to see how simple it is to create a box using FreeCAD and the Monport 40 watt laser engraver cutter. Okay, so in Lightburn, what we're gonna do now, I'm actually in my garage now, so you may hear some different noises and I have turned on the laser. So now you need to go back here where that library tab is. I'll go back to the laser tab and I just choose COM3, which is where my laser is, and it automatically homes itself. Then what I'm gonna do, I just double check that it's homed and then I'll show you I 3D printed a little uh, spacer that takes me to the zero, zero point, my uh, origin on my laser. I'll show you that in just a second. So all I've done is I've prepared a piece of cardboard, you can see it there, and I 3D printed this little spacer, and that spacer just tells me when I'm right in the origin point there. My little uh, laser pointer light that you can see here, that little laser pointer light is a little bit off from where the laser actually cuts. And what I always do when I'm gonna set it up I'm going to run what we call a frame. When I do that, it will outline where the cut's going to go. So I'm going to do that real quick. So here in Lightburn, you can see my parts here only go down to, to about 130 millimeters here, and that, that cardboard's well big enough for that. 
So this thing here called frame, it will outline the shape so I can see that it's actually going to stay on the cardboard. So I'm going to just quickly do that. And everything looks good after doing that. So now I'm actually going to cut it. And I'm going to try and video it for you. It's a little hard to video through the window, but I will do my best and you can take a look at it. If you look closer, you can see it, it's actually causing a flame. So you got to watch out that you don't actually set fire to this. If you had any kind of accelerant on the cardboard, I'd probably have a small fire going in here. So you have to be very careful that you're not um, overheating the material and causing it to catch fire. And as you can see, it cuts out the shape, and then we'll see what we've got at the end. And it's just getting to the end of the cut. I'm gonna, when it's done, I'll just open the lid and check to see if, if we in fact cut through. It looks pretty close. going to say it's close enough that we can pop those out. So here it is. I'm going to pop these out here. Now I think from a setting standpoint, I'm inclined to try and cut it with less power first. And if it doesn't cut all the way through to a second pass, rather than go with the uh, higher power and cause a fire. Okay, so there's my cutout. You can see the cutout from here. These are the parts. This part goes on here like this. This part would go on here like this. Oh, like this. This part goes on here like this. And my final part together like this and there we have a laser cut box very simple it's in corrugated cardboard so it doesn't look that great on the edges but it's the forerunner for doing this in wood I like to make sure I can do it uh, reasonably well before I try and do anything too complicated and that's what we have and just to demonstrate that they're easy to create multiples here's one I did earlier here's the one we just did and a quick look at the mom port so this is the mom port laser here you can see the actual laser So if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And we're going to have a bunch more stuff on FreeCAD and how to use it with a laser, but also we've got the CNC coming. So there's plenty of uh, new stuff to see. And if you're interested in buying a Monport laser, I'll leave a link below. If you use that link, you can get 6% off. And it's an affiliate link. Um, if you use that, it will also provide me with a small amount of income too.